I'm calling this message this morning, uh, Let's Reconnoiter. The past few days in the Twin Cities and our nation have caused the message I was planning for this morning to read headlong into another message which I need to give to you. The result follows, Lord have mercy. When I accepted the opportunity to serve South Cross Community as your interim pastor, you may imagine that I had some idea of what I was going to say to you at first, some plan for what I might share over the first few weeks. And especially given that I am in the nearly impossible situation of being your pastor without having had the chance to get to know you because of this truly damned virus. I had to choose a theme which was somewhat generic, something which would fit almost any situation. And so I arrived at the theme of weakness in the face of a mighty world. Simplicity in the face of the world's complexity, weakness in the face of the crush of the world's power. And so I began with the insignificant servant girl of 2 Kings 5, who told her mistress that she would, that, the, that their master would be in Samaria where there was a prophet which could heal him. This mere child in whose mouth the word of God proved to be mighty. And I moved on to discuss the troubles of the infant Corinthian church and Paul's observation that they are neither wise nor strong as the world sees it, but that therefore God has them right where he wants them because it has always been God's plan to bring to nothing the existing authorities through the foolish and the weak, through the scandal and power of the cross. And then, this week, early on, a man was murdered in our hometown by the authority which is supposed to protect and serve him and the neighborhood, the city, the state, and the nation came out from behind COVID-19 masks to shake us all. How in this moment is the word of God mighty in our mouths? And how do we bring to nothing the powers of hatred and violence which swarm around our city, which burn our businesses and libraries and precinct stations? How does the scandal and power of the cross whip that sort of foe? Of course, Jesus has an answer. He always does. He says in Luke 6, 27 through 36, Love your enemies, do good to those that hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend nothing, ex expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be called children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. So to put Paul and Jesus together, what is the Christian superpower? Paul will echo the words of his Savior in Romans 12, bless and do not curse. That is our charge, 
And it's our calling, brothers and sisters. It's our burden in times like these. God reigns in power. How does he show that power? Through his forgiving people. Jesus is Lord. How does Jesus in this moment and every moment like it reveal that lordship? Through the hands and arms and souls of his forgiving people. Minneapolis is burning. Well, where is the service to be done? Where is the work, the children that need to be fed? Where are the streets that need to be cleaned up? Because Jesus, the Lord of all glory, calls upon his people to bless and not curse, to heal and not to do harm. We see so much meaningless mayhem in the events of, these la of this last week mixed in with the righteous protest against this ongoing litany of murderous black young men and women in our recent history at the hands of the authorities. There is this other current, this undercurrent of mindless destruction, of carelessness, which is all heat and no light. Anarchy which knows no positive purpose. How do we answer such nonsense? With a prayer of blessing, with a cup of water, with a virtual hug in this strange time. In Paralandra, the second book of C.S. Lewis's space trilogy, there is a scene in which the antagonist called the Unman is walking casually through the undergrowth of the lush vegetation. And as he ambles along, he casually tears leaves from trees and kills little frog-like animals which cross his path. He does so without thought or intent or even any obvious malice, as though his only purpose is to mindlessly mar what another has created. We have seen the demonic unman in the Twin Cities this week, mindlessly destroying what others have been at pains to create. And what do we do about that? We do what we must always do. For we were not given a ministry of cursing and opposition. We were given to heal and to bless and to hope and to speak a good word of God's power from our mouths. What are we going to do right now? How bad is it? I mean, really, how bad is it? Jesus went on behalf of every one of us through the most painful, torturous, demeaning, and scandal 